First of all, we want to welcome everybody who came. Uh, we invited you all. We wanted you to help us celebrate this very, very special occasion. 65 years. How did we do it? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, what happened is Judy approached me and she said, look, we're having this anniversary, 65th year. You know what? What if we went back into the New York Times and found the announcement of our wedding? Sound like a good idea, so uh, she looked in the archives. She's our genealogist specialist. Went back, and sure enough, uh, she found the original one. I was really surprised. And uh, it came out uh, September 7th, uh, 1953. Uh, right there, it's, it's sort of old-fashioned and quaint, uh, but we thought you might like to hear it anyway. And we try to present it to you today. Okay, Judy, you want to start out? I, I have to tell you, this was no small feat because we were looking for something that 60, what, 65, is it on? Okay, yeah. 65 years old. But we came up with it. It reads, it was in the vows section of the New York Times, dated September 7, 1953. And they put a title on it. I had forgotten all about this, I have to tell you the truth. A couple tell a couple destined to persevere. Wow. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Judith Walbers, 21, and Jack Rothman, 26, were married on September 6 in New York. She is a resident of Boston, Massachusetts and he of Queens, New York. The wedding took place in the bride's sister's fashionable Long Island residence, a modern cookie cutter tract house <laughs> in one of the area's burgeoning suburbs. The 20 guests in attendance were just able to crowd into the living room, <laughs> while a few listened from the kitchen and the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Chairs and benches were brought in from a nearby funeral home <laughs> that provided seating, along with leftover flowers from a different cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> had to stamp on a wine glass four times before he could break it, <laughs> resulting finally in loud applause and a sprained ankle. <laughs> and I still have to kiss. <laughs> the bride indicated she is not convinced about adopting her husband's surname but said she has no choice because, <laughs> because of the stifling, conventional, sexist atmosphere of these 50s times. <laughs> <laughs> However, she did give thought to that possibility as it would move her up whenever she had to stand in line alphabetically. <laughs> Continuing. Uh, Rabbi Harold Weisberg conducted the ceremony. He was affiliated with the rebellious Reconstructionist <laughs> sect and was as close as Jack could find to an atheist clergyman. <laughs> <laughs> the groom completed his master's degree in social work at Ohio State University. 
the stifling conservative environment in the city of Columbus caused him to have heart palpitations and a political breakdown. <laughs> Previously, he was in the U.S. Navy during World War II. He was appointed a fleet marine and assigned to a crack military contingent guarding Camp David against invaders, <laughs> who never appeared. <laughs> and that was my most dangerous assignment. Anyway, as a teenager, the groom worked in the Borscht Belt as the fall guy for a stand-up comic. Because he was so young and inexperienced, he did not realize that he was not supposed to get more laughs than the headliner. <laughs> Fortunately, he was always able to go back to his regular position as a busboy. <laughs> the groom currently is a regional director for the Bene Brith Youth Organization. He shrewdly managed to pull, pull down an annual salary Three thousand five hundred dollars annually. Wow! A week. <laughs> he aspires to complete. A, he aspires to complete a PhD in social psychology, and start as a in an academic career, believing, misguidedly. <laughs> that it will provide a knockout income in the future. <laughs> the bride has completed three broken up years as an undergraduate student in different states and in different colleges since current norms dictate that women subserviently follow the man's career path. <laughs> <laughs> She is now determined to complete her undergraduate degree at Brooklyn College, even if her husband decides to move to another borough. <laughs> the bride is quoted as saying that upon graduation, she will refuse any job offer that has the word secretary in the title, even if people say it's a stepping stone and despite the fact that she can type 175 words a minute. <laughs> she gave up a good job in a publishing firm because of that. <laughs> Never forget it. The room's father, Joseph Rothman, formerly of the Ukraine is the proprietor of a dinky candy store on Myrtle Avenue. <laughs> Reporters were not able to obtain information on his country club memberships. <laughs> As a boy, the groom read every comic book in his father's store to assuage his funny bone. He says, that he inherited his sense of humor from his deceased mother, assisted by Jack Benny. <laughs> the groom's sister holds a position titled Senior Operations Technician at Schwartz's Ladies' Dresses on Delancey Street. <laughs> The bride's parents, Max and Lottie Walburst, attended the wedding only in spirit, as they are deceased. <laughs> Max, in 1932, took retirement from ownership of the model fabric store, as did everybody else in the firm take, take retirement, and also on the block due to the Great Wall Street crash. The bride's mother, Lottie Walbars, was a seamstress working at home. 
and also served informally as a consultant to the Singer Sewing Machine Company on problems of product malfunction. She also was critical on problems of family business. <laughs> she was an expert on that. <laughs> The bride and groom met in 1950 on the Ohio State University campus in segregated, or uh, gender segregated, I should say, sure? gender segregated <laughs> student co-op housing. What else was there in the 50s? <laughs> Unfortunately, they were not able to meet on Tinder OK Cupid or J Date. <laughs> this is the reporter's note because the technology has not yet been invented. <laughs> <laughs> the group is well known for his wandering eye, but did not notice Mrs. Rothman at the time because around the clock she wore baggy work shirts and Levi's, which have obscured her quite adequate female attributes. <laughs> she thought Mr. Rothman had Gene Kelly's good looks. <laughs> Even though, in a short time, it became obvious he could not dance a step. <laughs> They bonded over her love of his outlandish jokes. <laughs> the following year, on a visit to New York City, the bride, wearing a close-fitting skirt, now caught the groom's eye. Exchanges of letters and subsequent trips between Boston and New York followed. The relationship was advanced when the groom cleverly sent his sweetheart a Hebrew national salami for <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> now that was accompanied by a note. That was accompanied by a note which, believe it or not, for you people who throw things out every day, <laughs> this was the note. Sorry, that's the wrong note. <laughs> <laughs> and the note read, that's another note that I'll read you afterwards, not a long note. But this note with the salami, and this is the original note, reads, Dear Judy, when I was in the Navy, the greatest thing I could be sent was a salami. <laughs> Consequently, I'm sure this will be received at Fort Brandeis. <laughs> Besides, if the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach, the same must be true for a woman. They're people too. <laughs> that did it for me. Forget about the jokes, forget about the whatever else. That did it. Judy, yes. how long was the salami? How what? How long was the salami? <laughs> the engagement came about when they were dining on pancakes and beer at Luchow's famous German restaurant that was on 14th Street. <laughs> Fred, friends snidely hint that the beers most likely lubricated this decision. <laughs> to mark the occasion, the broom, broom later sent the bride a Lu Chow's matchbook on which he penned to a perfect match. Oh. 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 That's the original. It's a vintage. Wow. The bride later told him that she would have preferred you have set my heart afire. <laughs> 
It's not too late to change that. <laughs> the couple said they believe their experience living in cooperative housing taught them how to share and get along interpersonally. The groom ventured to predict they would be married for at least 65 years. Wow. The bride then blurted out that one of their wedding photos could even be used to announce their anniversary party. <laughs> and here we are. Please don't look for that uh, issue of the of time. Now I have to tell you, you, might find, you might be disappointed. The other, the other piece of paper I picked up, this explains everything. Clearly, I've moved around a lot with Jack. So I have my wedding band here, which I, is way too small for me to wear. I don't know if you just heard what I said. And the rabbi who married us, it's in, it has Hebrew lettering going around it. So he translated it for me, and this is the translation on a paper towel. I guess paper towels used to be brown. I don't know. And it says, <clears throat> I will dwell in every place that you will dwell. Aww. So it was destined to be that I would chase around the country with him, despite my making a objection every time. <laughs> okay, let me, let me say that, uh, louder? No, we're waving the bride. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, l let me say that, uh, interestingly enough, the person who came furthest to it, this event was Judy and my nephew, Michael Edison who traveled here from Hong Kong <laughs> with his wife, Annabelle. And I also want to tell you that Michael is the only person in this whole room that was at our original wedding. He was 10 years old, and uh, we asked him to come to confirm that we are a wedded couple. <laughs> So I, I do want to tell you one other story, and that's the day before our wedding, uh, I said to Judy, uh, we both have cold feet. Why don't we stay good friends? <laughs> so the secret of our wedding is that we got married and we stayed good friends. <laughs> Except when they're mad at each other. <laughs> okay, uh, you know the next piece of business or non-business here yes. is we're gonna. I want the microphone. Oh, uh, we're gonna <laughs> cut. We're gonna have uh, the, the cake cutting, and I know a lot of you have been very impatient for the cake. So uh, just hold it a minute, and you'll get it. I don't know, Jack. Thank yes. all of you for coming, but. We sir, you did. We, I certainly want to thank all of you for coming too, because you made it a very important event in our lives. Okay. We have another person uh, on the program just now. <laughs> in the mid '50s, Life magazine went to what was then Soviet Georgia and they interviewed a couple who had been married for 100 years. And they said, okay, what's it like? Well, how are things? They said, we don't fight much anymore. <laughs> true, true. The other thing is you said you had everything. And in the, also in the 50s, they were gonna close the patent office in Washington. And my father objected. He said, oh, they don't have everything yet. But when somebody invents a belly button cleaner, then they can close the patent office. <laughs> Do you have a belly button cleaner? 
Kelly. I've been thinking about getting oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon still doesn't carry it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I don't know if any of our kids want to say anything. Grandchildren, not expecting that. So uh, why don't we just go in and enjoy the cake oh, at this time? I do want to say that, I'm going to tell them what the cake is. Okay, yes, there's a carrot cake because that's Jack's favorite. And there's a Boston cream pie. You know why there's a Boston cream pie? And there's a New York cheesecake. Boston, New York, you get it. Uh, I, uh, before letting you go, I want to give Keith enormous praise on my daughter, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> Amy was an event planner supreme. But she did everything. I think as a present to her mother and father for this occasion, don't do anything, I'll do everything. Aww. And goodness, that's what Okay. Oh, I think I should do it. Uh, please uh, come and have some cake and coffee and mull around. Uh, we we can stay. We can be here for another hour till uh, like to hang out four thirty. Okay. Okay. Thanks.